Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Father, once again, we ask for your guidance, guidance and wisdom. Help us, Lord, as we study your word. Help me as I teach your word, O God. Give me uh, the words, Lord, that must be said in order to edify, encourage your people. And I pray, Lord, that everybody will be listening to the message today in our Sunday school so that, Lord, we can see where we are at in our spiritual life. And if there are things that needed to be fixed, Lord, help us. And if there are things that we need to pursue continually in our lives, then help us, O oh God. In, in, at any means, Lord, we'll be able to glorify you and serve you truthfully. I pray, Lord, that you will be glorified in our midst. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. So we are going to consider today the Christian's work, danger, and reward. The Christian's work, danger, and reward. So we can see that as a child of God, we are saved to serve. There is nobody here in this world that God saved and then not given a task to do while he is lingering in this world. The Bible says that we are ambassadors. That, it, that means that we need to represent our country, new country, which is heaven here on earth. The Bible says that we are soldiers. Therefore, we are facing a battle in our life. And as long as we live here, the Bible says that flesh and the spirit will always be at war with each other. The Bible says that we are a holy nation. Therefore, we need to exemplify a life that will uh, be truthful to our description. And then the Bible says that we are a priesthood, a royal priesthood. Meaning to say that we need to offer sacrifices unto God, not only for ourselves, but also for other people. And then we are a family that we should show our unity, our love, for each other, and so on and so forth. So there are many descriptions that were given to a Christian, but most often than not, we are described as servants of the Lord. Amen. Meaning to say that we need to serve our master, that our life must be in constant activity, serving and glorifying God in our lives. Actually, the uh, central text that we are going to look at today is verse number 9 when the Bible says that we should not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So what is to be our task as a Christian or a worker or a servant of the Lord? Well, two words, well-doing. Well-doing. Or doing that which is good. Because when we do these things, we, actually leave, we are actually living the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Acts chapter 10 and verse number 38. Acts chapter 10 and verse number 38. This is what the Bible says. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good. So everywhere he went, he's doing what is good. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we can see that what happened to the Lord Jesus Christ or, or the, the uh, condition of the Lord Jesus Christ is the same. As our condition that the reason why he was able to do good is because of the power that dwelleth in him. And that is uh, the Holy Spirit. That is uh, the power of God. And in the same token, we have the Holy Spirit in our hearts. So then we can also go about doing that which is good. Amen. And then in John chapter 20, verse 21, Jesus says, As the Father hath sent me, so send I 
you. What did the Lord Jesus Christ do in his life? He did that which is good wherever he went. And then it should be the same thing with us that we should be doing good. Why? Because we are the children of God. Because we are co-heir of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because as he was sent into this world, we were sent also in the same token of his sending. In first. Peter chapter 3 and verse number 17, we can see that doing good is contrasted in what we call doing evil. For it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil doing. So there are two things that we can do. We can do that which is well or good or we can do that which is evil. Suffering is something that is a part of our life. But God says it is better for us to suffer because we're doing good than to suffer because of our evil doings. So that is the reason why doing good is something that will show that we are really the children of God. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 10, we all know this, that since we got saved, we are God's creation unto good works. So, the thing that is now in us, our new nature, is designed only to do that which is good. That is the creation of the new man in us. But we need to be reminded that no one is saved by doing good. Ephesians 2.8 You're not saved because of what you have done. We are saved because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. Amen. It is uh, through His grace. It is by faith. And it is true, the incorruptible word of God. Our doing good proves that we are God's children, but it will never earn us salvation. Even if you will do good for the rest of your life. Amen. So because our good works is always tainted with our sinful nature. And whatever good we do or whatever good we do, there is always what we call a selfish uh, reason why we are doing these things in our lives. So let us look at, chap uh, at Titus chapter 3, verse number 8. One more thing that we need to look at as we uh, look at the uh, uh, Galatians chapter number 6. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. So you cannot help it, but if you believe in God, if you are saved, you will do good works. Maybe not every time, but most of the time at least. You cannot say that, well, uh, I, I do things 50-50. 50% 50 good works, 50% evil works. No. Our life must be characterized by good works. Amen. Yes, we will still sin, but sin is the exemption. It is not going to be the rule for the life of those who are saved and who belongs into the family of God. And Paul says these things are good and profitable unto men. Not only for the same people, but it is profitable for all men. Why? Because our good works is going to be a testament that God did something in our lives. Amen. Yung, yung pagpapakita natin ng mabuting gawa, ang magpapatunay sa tao, ayun ng mga taong yan, ay kinilos o kumilos ang Panginoon sa kanilang buhay. That is why a testimony, though it cannot save, is so powerful that it conveys to people that there is a supernatural power that works in your life. Why you became like that, doing good by the grace of God. So now, what does it mean to do good? Well, of course, it is, consists of every act of service, whether great or small, done for the sake of and for the glory of Jesus. So in good works, kahit ano yun, maliit man o malaki, if it is done in the name of Jesus, for the sake of Jesus, and for the glory of God, then we can call that 
good works. It may be in a form of Christian service, like preaching, teaching, soul winning, visiting, uh, singing, aiming, when there is a preaching. So all of these things can be considered as good works in Christian form or by simply giving a cup of cold water in the name of Jesus or in the name of a prophet. Everything that will benefit men and will glorify God is something that we call good works. So that is why we need to do these things. In Galatians chapter 6, some of these good works are actually mentioned. In verse number 1, it is helping people spiritually. Helping people spiritually. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, it means to say that this man is running. It means to say that this man is serving the Lord. It means to say that this man is moving forward in his life for the glory of God. But sad to say, he was overtaken. Nalagpasan. Na ng pagkakamali. O nalagpasan at nakagawa ng kasalanan. So these are not people who are living a sinful life. These are not people who are, are just uh, uh, contented in not doing anything for God. They're doing something. They are serving God. They are running. But they were overtaken in a fault. So they fell. So they committed sin. The Bible says, Ye which are spiritual. Who are these people? If you are matured, if you are something who understands what is happening in that person, the Bible says, Restore such an one. Amen. So that is our goal. Our goal is not to ostracize. Our goal is not to put down. Our goal is not to kill the wounded. Our goal is not to put people down. But our goal, the Bible says, must be restoring our fallen brethren. Amen. Well, pastor, but why do we rebuke people? Well, because sometimes that is the way how we can restore them. Because sometimes there are people who already knew that what they're doing is not right and will continue doing that. Sometimes we have to rebuke and tell them what you're doing is not right so that they may realize that there is an alternative to what they are doing. But the goal is to restore. The Bible says, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. That is why the Bible says, if you have an ought against, a, ought against a brother, talk to him first. If he will not listen, bring two or three more. If he will not listen, that's the time to bring it to the church. Why? Because we are trying to restore a person in the spirit of meekness. But if they do not like it, then we can do the other thing. And that is to rebuke them. Because the Bible also says that open rebuke is better than secret love. That's why I, I tell you yesterday that the pastor is, seems to always be the villain because the, the pastor always seems to touch the sensitive area of a person's life. But what will I do as a pastor? What will I do as an overseer? That is my job. To feed you the word of God. To oversee your life. That is what the Bible says. So if you're doing something wrong, I need to tell you that. Or I need to preach against that. So that you will realize and do something about it. You see, sometimes you say, Pastor, but you use the pulpit. What will I use? Shotgun? Paddle? I use the Bible and the pulpit. In order for you to understand where you are at in your spiritual life. And the attitude is this. If you hear something that is against you, thank God. Because he's still speaking to you. Don't take it against me. Why? I don't even hate you. What will I get out of hating you? But sometimes you push people to do things with grief and not with joy. It is never a joy for a pastor to rebuke a member. Never a joy. Sinong magulang na napapagalit sa anak na tuwan-tuwa ka? Wala. Pero why do you have to do it? Because you do not want them to go astray. 
You do not want them to go far away from God. Because some people, listen, if you're not going to tell them what they are doing wrong, will think that what they're doing is okay. As I have said yesterday, and I'm going to say it again, there is never a time in my life that I allow anybody including my father-in-law including my brothers my, bro my, my, my brothers-in-law including my relatives my friends to stay in my place and Sunday comes that they will not be in the church never why? because I love God I love the church and I want them to understand that my life revolves around God and the church. And if they will not do it, get out! There is no place for you here. Why? If you have an influence, use it. My cousin got saved because I used my influence over him. He wanted a, a, a pair of leather shoes. For his graduation. I said okay I'm going to give you that. But first attend the church. If you will attend for four consecutive Sundays. On the fourth Sunday. I will give you the money. So that you can buy a pair of leather shoes. On the fourth Sunday he got saved. After graduation he stayed with us. Until he died. Why? I have an influence. God gave me that. Why will I not use it for him? Even in the Old Testament, the Bible is very clear that you should bring people, even the strangers, within thy gates. Why? That's your chance. Pastor, ayaw nila palayasin mo. Huwag ka dito, kaibigan. Kaibigan kita, mahal kita, pero tumitira ka sa akin, kasama kita. Wala kang pakundangan sa pananampalatay. Iliba na lang. Kung kasi kilala ka niya. Alam niya kung sino ka at alam niya kung ano ka. Kaya kahit anong gawin mo, hindi mo siya mapipilit. Amen. Totoo yan kapatid. Dere siya ang salita yan. Totoo yan. Hindi pa yan. Misis ko buhay na buhay. Kung nagsisinungaling ako, alam niyan. Alam niyan. Kung nagsisinungaling ako. Kung hindi totoo, sinasabi ko, alam niyan. Hindi pa ako pumayag. Nung nakatira ako sa kanila, wala ako magawa, nakikitira ako eh. Nung nakatira ako sa lola ko, hindi ko maaya ang lola ko sa church. Bagamat inaaya ako, ayoko kanya, wala ako magawa. Kasi ako nakikitira. Pero kung siya lang ang nakikitira sa akin, eh, hindi pwedeng hindi. Hindi pwedeng hindi. Why? Because, alam nyo ba ang church, ang dugo ng Panginoon dumanak para dito. Para sa Para and then, nagtatampisaw ka sa dugo na yung walang kwenta, inaapak-apakan mo na mayroong pagkakataon. Kaya ang bawat pagkakataon, kailangan sinasamantala natin para sa Diyos. Amen? At ngayon, kung may magkamali, parealize natin. In the spirit of meekness, as I have said, if meekness will not work, then rebuke is in order. Amen? And people need to realize. People need to realize. Kaya nga, ako, as a pastor, I always put my neck on the line. Whenever I preach, there is a tendency that some members will get angry at me. Hindi ba napapansin nyo, pagka nagpipreach ka, every time na magpreach ka, may posibilidad na may magagalit sa'yo. If you preach against an equal yoke, those who have an unbelieving boyfriend or girlfriend, will get angry at you. And I do not know the reason why they will get angry instead of uh, righting the wrong, they will get angry at you. Am I become your enemy because I told you the truth? Kaaway mo na ba ako kasi sinasabi ko yung totoo? Oh, but hindi mo kaya isipin napakabuting kaibigan ni Pastor Sinasabi niya kung ako'y nagkakamali. Kahit malagay pa sa alanganin. 
You see, don't you know that all those people who left the church are saying things against me? Don't you know that? What happened to baby is still now is already known in Davao. And who's the culprit? Me. What did I do? Did I take care of her? Did I uh, perform my job as a pastor? Why did this thing happen to her? Well, you know very well that I did what I can. That I preached the word, that we preached the word of God. So what happened to her, what may happen to you, own it, please. Do not always point your finger at other people. Because maybe the reason why these things are happening to you is because of you. That's why you know some people, uh, if I may just go a little bit uh, out of the way, some people may, even when I was pastor in the Philippines, some people will, will approach me and will say, Pastor, I was promoted. Pastor like this, pastor like that. And I will be earning more. And I will have a better life. And all of these things. You know, I'm not a bit interested. I'm not even interested. Why? You don't care for the people. The reason why I'm not is interested is because I do care for them. Do you know why I'm not interested? I am more interested in your spiritual condition than your physical condition. You may earn more, but if you are not right with God, whatever you will earn, you will waste. Tama mali. Iba sa inyo, naranasan nyo ng kumita ng malaki. Ay, asan kayo ngayon? Dahil malayo kayo sa Diyos. Sayang, tatapon mo lang yun sa bisyo. Tatapon mo lang yun sa mga maling desisyon. Itatapon mo lang yun sa mga walang kwentang bagay. Bakit? Eh, hindi ka right sa Diyos eh. Pero right ka sa Diyos, kumita ka kahit konti, ilalagay mo sa gawain ng Panginoon. Maluluwalhati ang Diyos sa buhay mo. So that's why I'm more interested in your spiritual condition where you are going. Kaya nga pag nagpapaalam sa akin, nung ako'y nagpapasor pa sa ano, yung boy, si, si Sir Marbel, pakitaas ng kamay kung buhay ka. Ayun, tinaas ang kamay buhay. Tuwing may magpapaalam sa akin, Pastor, pupunta po ako ng Saudi. Brad ka ako. Eh, mga tanong lang ha. May posibilidad ba? Una, meron ba church doon na maa-attendan ka? Nag-scout ka na ba? Pastor, nabalitaan ko po meron eh. Kapareho ba ng pananampalataya? Kapareho, Pastor. Okay, good. Second question. Ang pamilya mo ba posible mong madala later on? Kung saan ka pupunta? Kasi magtatagal ka, kapatid eh. Madadala mo ba? Kasi maliliit pa anak mo. Ikaw ang mag-guide dyan. You should be the one to train your children in the way of the Lord. So can you bring them there? Pastor, I think there is no possibility that I can bring them there. Okay, don't go. If you are asking for my advice. Why? You may earn more, but you may lose your children. And it's not worth it. That's what I will say. But in today's churches, oh, oh brother, go, go, go. Just send your tithes, dollars, or real, all of these things. Because it is a favor for the church. And that is if you are greedy or filthy looker. If you are serving for money and not serving to glorify God. Somebody went to our church. Sister Maribel knew. He has a high position in uh, the one that made Beerhausen. Asia Brewery in Calamba Laguna. High position. He was a preacher in another church but he had a falling away with the pastor. So he left their church and attended our church, transferred the membership in our church, and then asked me, Pastor, can I preach? I said, no, you are working at Beerhausen, at, at the Asia Brewery. I cannot allow you to preach. And you are in charge of quality control. You, you are seeing to it that the beer that you are producing will really make the people drunk. And all of the accidents that may happen in the road and broken families, you are a part of it, whether you like it or not. So I said, no, I cannot allow you to preach. He's a good preacher, by the way. But I said, no. So out being disgruntled, he left our church. And he really gives much in 
tithes and offerings during the time. But I don't care. I am more interested in his spiritual well-being than what his status is or what he is earning. I can tell you, people with high, a good position and high profession that were not given a chance to stand behind the pulpit. Why? Because their spiritual condition is not right in the sight of God. So I'm not interested, my brother and my sister, in what you may have economically, but I am more interested that you are right with God because if you are right with God, wherever you go, listen, wherever you go, you will first see to it that your spiritual well-being is taken care of. Ganun yun. Hindi yung bibigyan ka ng $10,000, wala naman church. Ang gagawin mo sa $10,000. Hmm. Amen? Gagawin mo $10,000. Hmm. Iba sa inyo, nasagot ng kapilosop sa isip nyo. Wala, sasayangin mo yun. Sasayangin mo yun. Because you're not right with God. Number two. Look at verse number two. Sharing the burdens of others. Not only giving spiritual help, but sharing the burdens of others. Verse number two. Bury one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. You see? Second thing that we can do good is to help one another with their burdens in life. Amen. Some people will say, Pastor, I have so much burden why is it that nobody is helping me? You see, we must always put things in their proper perspective. Because if you, if you will recall, let's go back to uh, Galatians chapter 6 and let me just uh, look for it. Galatians chapter 6. The Bible says that in verse number 5, For every man shall bear his own burden. What verse number 2 is saying is this. You are carrying your burden. You are doing everything that you could to carry your burden. And if you have done your best, but your best is not enough, then that is the time that we will help you carry your burdens. Do you understand? We will not help you if you are not even carrying your burden. And you cannot expect anybody to help you if you're not even helping yourself. That's why the Bible is clear. Those who do not want to work, do not feed them. Why? Because you are pampering them. You are spoiling them. You're not actually helping them. So if a person is carrying his or her own burden, but he or she is not able to do it, then that's the time that we help each other and we fulfill the law of Christ. What is that? Helping, loving one another. Amen? But not to the point of, uh, not, uh, of helping people who are not actually helping themselves. Why? Because it is better to give than to receive. It is better to help than to be helped. To be helped, of course, is good. But it will be better if you're the one helping or giving than you are the one receiving. But sad to say, so many people just wanted to be at the receiving end of things. But they do not want to do their part of giving if they are blessed by God. You see, love, helping, and all of these things are two-way streets. This is not one way. This is not only going towards you. This is something that is a, what we call horizontal coming in and going out. Those are the things that we need to understand. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak. You see? Look at the word weak. They are doing what they can, but they are weak. They cannot do it. So we come. And we help them. Paraban, limang kilo, sampung kilo bigas. Dala dala ni Cedric tatawid. Dala pita mo ba tutulong mo sa parvey yung sampung kilo? Hindi. Ano kaya sa tawid niya? Ano kaya sa kasin? Dumasin ko lang kung pagbagaan niya. Pero yung sampung kilo bigas. Sister Marlene, 
This is the law of Christ. The law of Christ is not to spoil people, but to help people and make people, uh, make them strengthened by the help that we are providing them, especially in times of trials and testing. Kasi mga kapatid, alam niyo kung ba't ako nagiging masyadong mitikuloso? Kasi, I have been burned so many times by saying something, not elaborating and make it very, very clear that people will misunderstand. And I will even be judged or we are even be judged because we did not do what we are supposed to do. Kaya humahaba tayo eh. Kaya lang, anong gagawin? What will I do? Because I have experienced that so many times in my life. Like for example, helping those people in times of trials and testing. The first question is this. Why are you in times of trial? Why are you in times of testing? Is it because God is testing you? Or is it your own doing? If it is your own doing, you suffer the consequences. You understand what I'm saying? If it is God's test for you, it will also be God's test for us. Then let us help each other. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why I need to make it very, very clear. Kasi baka, may sakit po ako, dapat tulungan niyo ako. Ba't ba nagkasakit ka? Baka naman kagagawan mo. Pastor, meron po akong AIDS tulungan. Ba't nagka-AIDS ka? Lagi po kasi ako dun sa ano, doon po sa meso ma... Na, 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 na. Lagi po ako doon. Tulungan niyo ako. Tulungan. Tulungan kitang mamatay agad kung pwede. Di ba? Na ako niya ibig sabihin. Pero nagkasakit ka dahil sa masipag kang tao o kaya talagang may nangyari sa'yo, na aksidente ka, we will help you. Why not? Amen. But if you had an accident without any helmet, I will not help you. I already told you that. If you're riding a motor, wear a helmet. Because if something happened to you, I will not help you. Why? It's your fault. Madala ka so that next time. But pastor, I have a helmet. Where is your helmet? On my elbow. You use your helmet on your head, not on your elbow. Kaya pala walang damage dito. Ang damage dito, labas ang utak. Asan ang helmet mo? Nandoon mo sa ano? Sa bahay. Ah, kaya pala nung naaksidente ka, walang damage yung bahay. Ikaw lang ang na-damage. So we have to be careful about these things. We want to do good. But help us to do good. Help us help you. If the time will come that you may be needing help by doing what is right so that we can do these things for the glory of God and that we can do it with joy as a church or as a family of God. Number three, sharing what we have with others. Verse number six. Verse number six, the Bible says that let him that is taught in the word Communicate unto him that teach it in all good things. Of course, if you will apply this strictly, you communicate to me because I'm teaching you uh, in all good things. But at the same time, it can be applied to all of us that if God bless us, then we need to share that blessing to other people. But again, listen. If somebody is blessed, do not demand for that somebody to share it to you. You see, I have to again make it clear. Because if not, if God blesses somebody and you did not share, they will say, what kind of a Christian is that? He knew that I am in need. He did not even share it to me. Swapang. So you will commit sin. You will put yourself in a situation that you are making yourself entitled to the blessings of other people. He's the one blessed by God. He was given much. Then let him 
have much required of him, but it is not for you to demand. It is not for me to demand. Nagpaparinig lang tayo. Baba, bago nating si Liz, ang galing Pinas. Ah, baka may merienda dyan. Ay, mga ganun-ganun. O, yun lang. Ah, oh, oh, nag-graduate si Francis. Yung mga tipong ganun ba? Pero hindi tayo magdi-demand. No. We're not going to demand. If He will feed us, thank God. Thank you, brother. If not, thank God. Because God is supplying all of our needs. But we do not have to take any ill feeling against Him. Amen? Oh. Amen. So sharing what we have with us, look at Acts chapter 2, verse number 44. This is a common uh, attitude of the people of the early church. Acts chapter 2, verse number 44. And all that believe were together and had all things common. They see to it that everybody have their needs by the grace of God. Not only that, but we can also see that in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 32. The Bible says, And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. So they look at themselves as stewards and see to it that they are going to be a good steward of the manifold blessings given to them by God. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verses 7 to 15. This is very clear. And this is something that we need to have as a church of God. Every man according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. It is your own determination. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. So there is a reason why God bless us. We are blessed to be a blessing. As it is written, He hath dispersed abroad, He hath given to the poor, His righteousness remaineth forever. What we have done will always be noticed and rewarded by God. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase in the fruits of your righteousness. So it will redound to your own increase whenever you give out. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. So there will be a blessing. It might be material, it might be financial, it might be uh, spiritual, it might be something that will just give you joy in your heart. For the administration of this service, not only supply the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgiving unto God. It will not only supply the needs of people, but they will thank God because of you. So what you're doing will also redound to the glory of God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel. Who glorified God? Those recipients of the blessing. So if you receive a blessing, you glorify God. You thank God. You thank the giver. Wag yung, hmm, di naman masarap. Wag naman ganun. Malansa. Kulang sa alat. Matabang. Huwag naman ganun. Amen? Binigay na nga lang eh. Iba yung pinili mo. Pag maalat, sabihin mo, bawasan mo naman ng asin. Pag kulang ng asin, sabihin mo, dagdagan mo naman ng asin. Pero pinigay lang sa'yo, tinanggap mo, pasalamat ka. Hindi mo nagustuhan, bigay mo rin. Bigay mo sa aso. Oh, pasalamat sa'yo yan. Amen? unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. And by their prayer for you. See? Ipagpe-pray ka pa! Lord, please continue to bless him. Why? So that he will continue to give to me. So that's the wrong motive of prayer. But you, you, you pray for them that God will bless them. Why? Because they have a heart to help which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. So you see, if we help one another, if we share what we have, then the glory will go to God, not to you. 
And if you are blessed, as I have said, the people should not force you or they are not make, must make themselves entitled to your blessing. In the same token, when God bless you and you help, do not force them to thank you. Binigyan na kita, hindi ka man nagpasalamat. Kapal nito. No. If you have given, do it for God's glory, not for your own glory. Oh, I'm not going to give him anymore because he has no credit inside. No gratitude. Oh, see? So we need, to, we need to understand both sides of things. And then, doing good generally. Look at verse number 10. Do good to all men. That's what the Bible says. They may be unbelievers. They may be your enemy. They may not be your acquaintance. But they are in need. That's why there is what we call charitable institution. That's why there is what we call chari charitable works. That is why sometimes we will see that a person is in need and we do not even know those people. But sometimes we send. That's because the Bible says, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. All men. Not only the people that you love. Not only the people that you know. But if there is an opportunity, meaning to say, you are able, then do good to all men. Not at the same time, because you cannot do that. Even Bill Gates cannot do that. But if there is an opportunity for a person to help a person, do it. But again, if you are going to continually uh, if you will continue reading, there is a special act of love for what we call the family of God. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially. Yan lagi yung sinasabi ko eh. Ice cream on top. If you will give halo-halo to all men, when you give it to a member of the family of God, put ice cream on top. Especially. If you are going to help all men, do more for the household of faith. Why? Because they are our brothers and sisters in the Lord. That's why it is so evil to defraud a brother or a sister in Christ. And this is something that had been a problem before. They said that why do we always favor the members of the church? Of course. They are of the house of the faith. Why do we have to favor Christians more than the unbelievers? Of course. They are the house of the faith and it was commanded to us by God. Kaya kung konti lang ang diferensya, doon na tayo sa kapatid. Amen? That's why I'm so saying, if if they are both qualified and this one is a Christian, this one is not a Christian, get the Christian. Why? Because there is a greater possibility that the help that we will extend to the household of faith will do more for the kingdom of God than for the unbeliever. It will not even accomplish anything. Except if we can influence them to become safe. That is the greatest accomplishment that we can have in life. The Bible is very clear. Do good to all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So I hope we, we are going to really understand this by the grace of God. Let's move on to the second point. Uh, we're not be, we won't be able to finish this. But what are the dangers that are facing the servants of the Lord? In verse number 9, it says, the Bible says, do not be weary. So there is the danger of becoming weary. Burnout. Uh, uh, you are over, overburdened by the work. Or you can be overwhelmed by everything that we are doing for God. So even though that it is good to be engaged in serving the Lord, there is the danger of becoming weary and fainting in doing all of these things. For example, a Sunday school teacher may become weary in teaching. A song leader may become weary in leading the songs. 
Especially if the people are not following the, the song leader or if they're not singing with joy in their hearts. So there is a possibility of getting weary, losing heart, losing enthusiasm, and fainting or uh, becoming liturgic, weak, or sometimes stopping what we are doing for the Lord. That even the Apostle Paul is subjected to this. That's why he says, let us not be weary. Including himself. Because there is a possibility that he will get weary. Just imagine what Paul is doing. He's uh, visiting all the churches that he uh, established. He's uh, writing letters and taking care of the problems of the many churches. And not only the problems inside the church, but even the cares of, of churches that are in need during that time. So Paul took it upon himself to do all of these things and there is a possibility that he will get weary because so he, while helping them, he's being hunted by the people or the enemies of the cross. He was stoned, he was imprisoned, he suffered shipwreck and all of these things. Aside from doing all this, he is exposed to the elements natural elements and enemies that are out there to destroy him. So there is always the possibility. Actually, as a pastor, this is one thing that we are always subjected to. If you remember, in the past few weeks, I, 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 I wanted to stop preaching for a few months. But like Jeremiah said, there is that fire in my bone that I could not stay. If you're a preacher, you're a preacher. You cannot just sit down. You need to stand up and you need to preach. Because that is what God called you to do. So after just a week or two, I could not control it anymore. So I have to stand up and preach the word of God. I have to do it. But then again, sometimes we need to be wise that if we cannot really all do all of these things, it is better to do less but to do it better. Amen. Sometimes you are the jack of all trades, but master of none. If you can master one or two and do it better, or do it best, then concentrate there. And you can accomplish more by doing less. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes you want to do everything, and you cannot do it uh, well. But if you will just do several things, and do it well, then it can glorify God more than if we are doing more, but actually not doing uh, it well by the grace of God. So there is the danger of becoming weary. Sometimes there is what we call lack of air can cause weariness and faintness. If you are in a room that is totally shut and you stay there for a long time, after a while you will feel you're going to, you, you are becoming weak. Why? Because of uh, lack of fresh air. You are uh, inhaling more carbon than uh, oxygen. And the same thing with a Christian. If we do not always go to God in prayer, meaning to say our breath being lifted up to God, then there is a tendency that we will become weary. That we will become weak. Why? Because prayer is power. A prayerful Christian is a powerful Christian. While a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Prayer is the only power that can move the hands of God. And prayer is something that God is looking for us because God wanted to communicate with all of us. Luke chapter 18 verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Amen? So, we are commanded to always pray. How many times do you pray every day? My brother, my sister, pastor at least three times. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. How about snack? It's only snack. No need to pray for it. You see, we need to always be prayerful. Pray without ceasing. Our life must be characterized by Prayer. You can pray while you're driving. Don't close your eyes. You can pray while you are teaching. You can pray while you are working. You can pray while you are praying. Yung tira ni Cedric, kagabi, it's a prayer eh. No? 
Hindi nasagot eh. Talagang binatang eh. Tapos nasalo ni Amiel. Siya mag-isa, libre-libre, tinira, kapos. Buti na lang, ando si Super Gomer. Vera. Nakuha ni Gomer, tinira, pasok, tapos ang laban. Oh, abang mubo pa. Oh. Ayan. So, pray. Nag-pray ka ba, brad, yung tinira mo? Ay, hindi. Hindi ka pa nag-pray niyan. Kaya, muntik na hindi pumasok eh. Eh, kung nag-pray pa siya, pasok na pasok yun. Amen? O si Deo, panayang pray na manalo sila, talo naman. Kasi, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. Yun, doon ka nagkamali. Kaya next time, pag pray mo, manalo kami. Panalo kayo. Ayan, sa'yo yun ang mangyayari. Avail it much. Sometimes, lack of food will make you weak. Amen. If you will not eat, you will become weak. The same thing with us. Our spiritual food is the Word of God. Remember, especially preachers, pastors, we are feeding. And because we are feeding, we need to be fed also. Mahirap magpakain ang gutom. Di ba? Kada, ah, kamutulo laway mo. Ah, namang ganyan. Di ba? Mahirap yun eh. Magpakain ng gutom, wala kang energy. Wala kang power. And preaching and teaching the Word of God is not that easy. You see, you may play basketball for three games and then you can preach with all your heart and you will feel more tired after preaching than after playing basketball. Why? Because in basketball, what's involved is physical. But in preaching, it is physical, emotion, and your spirit is involved whenever you are doing that. That is why it is more tiring to preach than to play basketball. That's why if you ask the preacher, they'd rather play basketball than preach. Amen? Uh, spiritual to mga doa. Job 32.12. Job 32.12, and I think we're going to finish this in a few minutes. Five minutes stops. Yea, I attended unto you. Job chapter 23.12. Layo eh. Gutom ka na, anak? Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. You see, Job is more, more interested in reading the word of God than eating. Why? Because Jesus even said that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So, yun ang kailangan natin gawin. And then, insufficient sleep will make you weak. When you're sleeping, you are resting. So, as Christians, we must always rest on the promises of God. Not always rest, ha? Huh? I did not stop there. We must always rest on the promises of God. Not rest. Because I know we love that. That is something that we desire for our lives. But we must rest on the promises of God. Psalms 119, 165. Because if not, we will become weary. Great peace of they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. If we will love the law of God, we will love the word of God. If we will rest on the word of God, then we are going to no, we're not going to get weary in the things that we're doing. Isaiah 26.3 Isaiah 26.3 Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. If you are trusting God, then you are going to be alert and there will be peace in your life because you trust in the Lord. And then, discouragement. One sure way for a Christian to get weary and faint is if that Christian is discouraged. Discouragement will come, but do not linger in that state. Why? Because God is always available to comfort and to encourage us. For Samuel 30, verse number 6. 
And then after this one verse, and we will end. And David was greatly distressed, discouraged. For the people spake of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. I think it's in the because David made a miscalculation in strategy in war. They were able to be, uh, their children and their wives were taken captive by the enemies. So when they came back, the, the, the children and the wives are not there anymore. So they became so grieved that they wanted to stone David because it is a boo-boo on the part of David. But look at what the Bible says. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. So he did not whine. He did not complain. He did not just give up. He said that we will do something. And by the grace of God, because David trusted God, God allowed them to recover their wives and their children from the enemy. So when discouragement is coming, run to God. Because He is our haven of rest. He is our buckler. He is our shield. He will encourage us. And what will be our reward? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 58. If we do all of these things by the grace of God, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, steadfast, meaning to say strong, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. There is no stopping in serving God. Keep on keeping on, keep on doing more. For as much as ye know, there is the assurance. Something that is sure. That your labor, hard work, is not in vain. In the Lord. Amen? God is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love. Do not be weary in well-doing for in due season. There is the right time. Amen? There is the right time for in due season. Sometimes the reason why we get weary and we faint is because it is as if nothing is happening. But there is a right time in due season. In his time, God makes all things beautiful in his time. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. So I hope and I pray that we're not going to stop, but we will keep on keeping on because what we're doing for God will never be in vain. It will not be wasted. God will take care of it. And he will see to it that we are rewarded even though that is not our reason for serving him, but we are serving a righteous God. Shall we stand up, please? Father, we thank you for the lesson that you have